Iowa Catholic Radio now presents the Sunday Mass from the historic Basilica of St. John in Des Moines, Iowa. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Basilica of St. John. As we prepare for Holy Mass, please turn off all cell phones and electronics. Our celebrant for today's Mass is Reverend Aquinas M. Nichols, pastor of the Basilica. The intention of this Mass is for Margot Boone. The Mass will be found in the hymnal supplement, page 23, Mass 17. The readings will be found in the Sing a New Songbook, page 106. Please join in singing the opening antiphon and sing a new songbook, 
page 106, second Sunday of Lent. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, who died for us upon the cross, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, who came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. 
When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram (coughs) and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All of this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The Word of the Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Our second collection this evening will be for the upcoming repairs on the exterior of our basilica. After last Sunday's account of Jesus' trials in the desert, we hear today of his transfiguration. It was doing the will of the Heavenly Father that Jesus desired and not status, wealth, or power. This Sunday, second Sunday of Lent, is known as Transfiguration Sunday since every year one of the gospel accounts of the transfiguration is read. 
The story today in our first reading of Abraham sacrificing his son indicates that Abraham desired to fulfill the will of God no matter what was asked of him. Of course, God was only testing him and did not actually require that he sacrifice Isaac, but it is a prefiguration of the sacrifice of Christ on Calvary. The Heavenly Father does require this of his own Son through his own free will, which brings about the redemption of mankind. Our second reading tells us that like Abraham, God did not spare his own son. St. Paul explains that God's actions were on our behalf. Therefore, believers should not fear. He offers a litany of devastating occurrences and concludes that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. St. Paul is addressing the problem of sin, the problem of the law, and the problem of flesh and death in order to explain how the gospel is the power of God for the salvation of all. St. Mark's account this evening of the transfiguration upon the mount tells us that this event stands near the midpoint of the narrative functioning as an affirmation of Jesus' call and a sign that his passion will end in glory. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man had to suffer and to die. Those who would be disciples likewise must take up their cross and follow Jesus. But for those who are ashamed of Jesus, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes into his Father's glory with the holy angels. The transfiguration thus is a foretaste of the experience of the glory in the heavenly kingdom. Here, for a second time, God the Father affirms Jesus as he did at his baptism in the Jordan. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. At his baptism, only Jesus heard God's words. But now the trusted disciples are privileged witnesses as well to the confirmation of the Heavenly Father. Every second Sunday of Lent, this account of the Transfiguration is a foretaste of the resurrection which we will celebrate at Easter. It is meant to motivate us to continue our Lenten journey and sacrifices so that we keep looking for God's rainbow present amid the storms of sin and daily life. To find that rainbow, we must first die ourselves to our sinfulness by admitting our sins and seeking God's forgiveness. By seeking and living God's will, we ourselves are transformed. Obedience to a new life of discipleship offers us new freedom. Abraham and Jesus chose obedience to God, and by offering themselves totally, they found freedom in the presence of God and in his transforming love. The same freedom is offered to us this Lent. When we live for God, who is always for us and with us, then nothing can be against us if we turn to him with contrite hearts and strive to do his holy will. So the question before us on this second Sunday of Lent is how far are we willing to go to express our love for God? Are we willing to die to self and take on the discipline of Lent in a serious way? Let us then look for God's rainbow and his blessings, and let the grace of God allow us to transform us one day at a time. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God the Father handed over his only begotten Son for all of us, and he will give us everything else along with him. Filled with confident trust, we now place our needs before the Heavenly Father. For His Holiness Pope Francis, the Vicar of Jesus Christ on earth, that God will strengthen and uphold him in his patrine office, we pray to the Lord. For our Bishop William and all bishops in communion with the Holy Father, that during this Holy Lenten season they will lead us in the paths of reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. That during this holy season of Lent, the Holy Catholic Church will be refashioned with the light and glory of Christ's transfiguration, we pray to the Lord. That civil leaders will use their authority to protect the dignity of the poor, the marginalized, the oppressed, victims of injustice, and all the unborn, we pray to the Lord. For those preparing to be received into the Holy Church at Easter, that their embrace of the Lord's Prayer will keep them close to Christ, we pray to the Lord. That the role of wives and mothers may be more appreciated in every country throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. For the increase of vocations to the sacred priesthood, the diaconates and religious life, especially for our diocese and from the young of our parish, for the perseverance of our seminarians, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and the hospitalized and for all those on the Basilica prayer list, that God's healing touch may be with them, we pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, especially the members of our families, our relatives, friends, benefactors, oblates, and deceased parish members, that they may be blessed to come before the throne of God and to dwell there in his eternal glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving Father, may we embrace your holy will with the certainty and the obedience manifested by our father Abraham. We ask this as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing our offertory hymn found in the St. Michael's hymnal, number 801. Tis good, Lord, to be here, number 801.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end we acclaim. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us his pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, with St. John, St. Benedict, Pope St. Paul VI, Pope St. John Paul the Great, and all the saints with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will 
who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
please join in singing our communion hymn found in the St. Michael's hymnal, number 406, All Holy Jesus, number 406. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. 
Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. And keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Please join in singing our recessional hymn found in the St. Michael's Hymnal, number 780, The Glory of These Forty Days, number 780.
You've been listening to the Sunday Mass from the Basilica of St. John in Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network.